What's up YouTube? My name is John Jagsney and today we're talking about in-camera transitions in After Effects. I use this technique all the time. One of the latest examples of that is this board game promo I did with Ultra Pro Entertainment and their game Sweetlandia, a very fun candy card game where you get to explore Sweetlandia and try and buy things in the town and uh, yeah it's a lot of fun and I made some camera transitions in that video so let's talk about that all right so we are in After Effects and we're talking about in-camera transitions it comes down to the graph editor and thinking about the movement that's going to incentivize where we want the eyes to look so let's look at the scene and see what we're working with this is the pre-render, the final version that we did. We have some little particles moving up and the camera sweeps up all the elements sort of like pop up on screen and then the cards come forward. We're really trying to tell like, this is a card game. Look at these cards. Now, the way we did this is a couple of things. First, if we look at the actual scene itself in the no VFX pre-comp that I made. So these are the scenes that I have but less a little bit of extra effects to make this render faster for you guys and also uh, demonstrate the harshness of a cut if we don't have any transitions there. So let's play this back and we'll see same exact thing but I did one tweak to the camera movement to take out the fun stuff and then hard cut. This is a very jarring transition in my eyes. It really just feels like we're going from a bright, colorful scene to something that's more indoors and more technical, blueprinty. How can we make that blend a little better? So the first thing is I wanna go into this second pre-comp here. The second scene, and it's just the cards sort of sitting there, chilling out and whatnot, and then the cards eventually pop up, and then that's where we want people to look. So. The first thing that I did is I built the background. What is like the, the overall tone of the scene? It's as if you're setting up a shot in camera, you always like, what's in my shot first? So this was in the shot. I, and I knew the subjects had to be the cards, but I was like, background, how am I gonna transition to that? What I ended up getting is some stock footage of an ink preset. So if I go in here and I look at this, it's literally just a black alpha mat that sort of inks on and it, it's an ink transition. It looks very inky and blobby and I think it lended well to the art style because in the game Sweetlandia it's very beautiful colors and fun art. So I wanted to lean into that. So this was the one of the first assets that I had to pick up to make this transition work. You can find stuff like this all over the internet. Just look up ink transition. I'm sure you can find something online. Now we can jump out of this pre-comp here and we can see that what I did is I have the background and then this ink pre-comp, but it's not affecting the layers below it. And the reason why is I set this to a silhouette luma mat. So basically what that means is anything that is black, it will show. So if I turn this eye on, for example, and set this to normal, Right now, the scene is completely white, but if it goes black, everything will show. And no normally when we think Photoshop, uh, white reveals, black conceals, this is the opposite. So if I turn this back to Silhouette Luma, we can see everything below this ink layer is being revealed. So that's pretty cool. And now we have the background sort of coming in. That was the first step to this in-camera transition. So now if we go back and go back one more time, let's turn off this second layer. We'll get there in just a second. We'll, let's see what this transition looks like. Ooh. Okay. Now the cards are coming in. So what if we go in and we solo this background layer just so that nothing else is being too distracting. Let's, let's give this one more playthrough. Okay, that's feeling a little bit better. We get that top-down movement of the ink transition coming down as if it's enveloping the scene, so to speak. But I wanna motivate this a little bit more, make it feel a little bit more interesting. So the next step with this was camera movement. So what we did with it is we added some camera movement in both scenes. So in the first scene with the big city, 
Let's jump in here and we can see that we have some markers. And for me, that was my reference point for how the camera transition needed to work. So I have this camera right here and if I click on the graph editor, I can see that I have this camera sort of panning back and some very subtle Y position movement. I want the camera to move upwards, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to position three and that's where it would stop and then we're gonna add another keyframe at that marker number three. Hold shift and drag that into position. And now because I want this to move up, I want to bring this value down because sometimes After Effects is weird. So I want this to move down and I'm gonna uncheck the little magnifying glass here and hit the space bar on my keyboard to move up and down and around and just zoom in and just bring this boop above this above most things. So yes, just like that. And then I'm gonna take this curve, if I hit this zoom to height again, and then fit graph, I'm gonna bring this handle up. So what I'm looking at right now is this transition is gonna start slow and then get faster as, as the frames go on. Okay, so now what we have is this. And then if we go back to the main composition, let me play that back. That feels a little better to me. And the reason why is because the movement of the camera is starting to create that sort of incentive with movement up into the downward movement of the ink. So there's still some things we need to do. First, now I need to go into the second transition and I need to look at the camera, and now I have a camera controller in this composition, this main camera, if I just solo this stuff really quick, we can see that my camera controller, my camera, if I go to my custom view, and then zoom around my scene a little bit, zoom out, my camera, control shift H, is connected to this camera controller. So I can sort of just like move it up and down, left and right, etc., etc. And that's what I want to do. I know that the previous scene, scene one, is starting at a flat position and moving upwards. So what I want to do is over the first 12 frames of this scene, of scene two, to start at a lower height and then move into where it is positioned now. So let's go back to our active camera. We'll set a keyframe at keyframe 12 and then a keyframe at zero. And then we'll just scooch this down a little bit. So now if we play this back in camera, it should, in theory, move up as if we're moving upward in the scene. Maybe we'll go down a little bit more, or a lot more. If you hold shift, it will change the magnitude at which your values can go up or down. And if you hold control, it'll make it smaller. Smaller increments, bigger increments. Let's auto save and let, let it wait for just one second. Let's undo that, and then we'll hit our graph editor and we'll do the same thing that we did with the previous curve, but invert it. So we want it to start fast. We're gonna bring this curve down. We wanna make the graph steeper, the slope of this steeper. So now if we play it, and then maybe for just a little extra fun, what we'll do is we'll scooch this keyframe in just a little bit and we'll make another keyframe at frame 12, and then we'll just scooch the first keyframe down just a hair. And maybe I actually scooch this down just a bit. And then what that's gonna do is give us a little bit of bounce. One more time, play that back. Maybe it's a little bit too steep, so we can just pull this down. And then if we uncheck the zoom to height, we can zoom in and really just fine tune that curve so that it's a little bit nicer and neater. All right, I'm cool with that. 
So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our in tra camera transition output and just let's see where we're at now. Looks so lo looks okay. You know, I do regret the um, the little bounce. So we're just gonna go in and undo that really quick. So we can just take this keyframe and overwrite that. And actually we may need to scoot this out just a little bit, maybe like frame 16. And the reason why I know that is because we wanna have that movement as if there's some follow through for it. So if this movement is starting in scene one, we want scene two to follow that same movement, so to speak. So one more time. more and maybe scooch this down even more I want there to be a little bit of sort of delay as it sort of comes through okay we're getting there now what I need to do is I need to bring in all the other parts so if we unsolo this and then unsolo the background we can see that we have all these parts and they're sort of like just there now i took the liberty to take the old scene and create two separate pre comps so that we don't have to see me animate all these little parts once again so let's just save really quick and then we'll go back to our scene no transition Turn that on, turn the old one off, and we can see now that if we play this, there's no camera movement, but all of these little components sort of animate onto the scene. And if we just let this reload for just a moment, that looks pretty good. Now, there's the camera movement that we need to address. Fortunately, one of the things I did was I took all the keyframes that I saved from the original pre-comp and then just copied or copied the null so then I can go into the camera controller and just paste all this stuff. So I can just take these keyframes and then paste them right there. And now I should be able to see that sort of upward and zoom out movement. I actually did add a little bit of zoom back out for this pre-comp. And then one of the things I did to give it a little bit extra life is I added a wiggle expression to your camera, or to my camera. Uh, just wiggle 0.5.5, it gives it that little handheld look. Now, as we look at this, we're gonna let it play through. We can see that it's getting very close but there's one more thing we need to address. That feels so good, but there's one huge problem, and that's this really harsh line right here. How are we gonna hide that? So we could blur it, but that adds more effects and layers. One of the things I ended up doing is I made my own little cloud layer with some fractal noise. So if I go into my main composition, my scene one, I have this clouds layer right here, and if I turn that on and I solo it, that cloud doesn't appear until the very, very end when that transition starts. And we can see there's a harsh edge there still, but the blending between the keyframes, we actually don't end up seeing this part. So when it comes to VFX and motion design, everything is fake, nothing is real, and uh, you, it, that's just the nature of uh, this art form. There's some things that you hide and no one will see. So these clouds sort of come in and down, and if we just look at this sort of curve, it's literally just a fractal noise effect. If I reset that, it's just that. It's just that. Um, but then I changed some of the properties, so if we undo that and I go into the transform, I really brought up, made it a lot wider. I changed the width of it because that's I, this looked kind of cloudy to me. Now you could also go to some stock site and get your own sort of like stock clouds or something and do the same exact thing and just keyframe it along that hard edge and just make it really, really big so that um, you avoid that hard edge. And there's only just a couple frames in there 
where we don't even see it. So uh, let's see how this works if we play that back. Not bad. Now, the final piece to this, and this is critical to get that in-camera transition to work, you need motion blur. So I have motion blur off right now because it takes a little bit longer to render. But once you turn it on, everything blends together. So the motion blur, blur button, the motion blur button is right here and we'll hit control A and U to collapse everything. And when we save it, always save, but that motion blur will help blend those final harsh edges so we don't see them. So I'm gonna let this RAM preview really quick. So one more time, let's uh, RAM preview that. That feels much better. I feel much happier about that transition. It feels seamless, it feels good. You get that incentive movement, and then we have the cards pop up and whatnot. And just to verify that uh, this is all happening in After Effects, in camera, I didn't uh, try and cheat this for you guys. I Here, you know what, delete the, the the unseen pre-render video, there's nothing hidden in this. It's just a very clean sort of upward transition. So when it comes to in-camera transitions, think about ways where you can have more blur, you can have the same camera movement between cuts and have the speed of those camera movements match more or less so that it feels like an intentional movement. So that's it, that's the tutorial on how to do one example of an in-camera transition in After Effects. I hope you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, or let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. Comment section is down there for that as well. Or you can hit me up on Instagram at John Jags Knee and join the party. If you want to hit that subscribe button, it lets me know that I'm creating valuable content to more people, and uh, it's fun, and I always enjoy sharing uh, sharing time with other people and uh, learning more about what you're doing. So. Uh, yeah, if you want to join the party, hit that subscribe button. If not, I still appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my face. I hope it was worth it. And I will leave you with this. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some tea. Goodbye, my friends. Bye. Put the place up. Put my face up.